Hello everyone, thank you for joining. Uh, just got this new piece in, very excited. Been eagerly awaiting this. Gonna do a quick unboxing review video of the Cold Steel Samburu Spear. Not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, let me know if I am. Um, so we're gonna just get right into it. Go ahead and get this thing open. Just cut that open. I had been um, really into pole arms recently. Um, my first pole arm was uh, an invention of self-made uh, Naginata. I'll have to show that one soon. Um, but then when I started getting serious, uh, you know, realized my design wasn't the greatest. I just made it a little too heavy. Um, and you'll see when I when I do a review on that one. It, it looks pretty awesome though. Anyhow, um, realized my design wasn't the greatest and uh, decided to do some more proper research into pole arms. And that led me to my first pole arm, which was the Cold Steel uh, Halberd. And I'm gonna have to do a review on that one too. Unfortunately, I didn't do the unboxing. But anyhow, here we have this one. Um, since the Hellbird, um, I started really appreciating, um, you know, just good uh, pole arms in general. Let's get let's get the light on. Actually, I forgot to turn that on. Um, and it's led me to a variety of different pole arms: Naginatas, Yumis, and Spears. Um, I would have to say my favorite pole arm. Now I haven't been able to try all these. Or every different variation of these would be either a halberd, or um, I like the uh, the Roman pilum. Uh, big fan of that. Um, however, you can't beat a good old spear. Just a, a simple spear, like similar to this design that you see right here. Very lightweight, thin, nice and long. Um, this thing is supposed to be uh, seven over seven feet, seven or seven feet tall exactly, I believe. Um, so let's get right into this one. Uh, also more importantly, not just that length, how light it is. You see here, see if I get that in frame. The head is about seven inches, overall seven feet, two pounds, eight ounces. The handle is hickory and the steel is SK5. Not really sure what that means. Uh, let's check out the back. Here we go. Quite a long... Disclaimer there. Let's see if I can show that going up. There we go. See that? Number to call. The Sambu tribe who inhabit Kenya's rugged northern frontier. Tall, lean people who eke or eke out a living as semi-nomadic herders of sheep, goats, donkeys, camels, and cattle. The warriors of the tribe known as the uh, Muran. I'm guessing the L is silent there, are particularly impressive as they never cut their long braided hair and decorate their faces and torsos in beautiful, beautiful, beautifully intricate patterns using a cosmetic mixture made from animal, animal fat and red uh, or, orker, or, orker, or, okre. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Since their flocks and herds are constantly menaced by predators and subject to raids by lawless shiftas, also known as bandits, from Somalia. They seldom venture outside of their crawls, uh, which would be a makeshift hut, without being thoroughly armed. In fact, no warrior of his name would think of being caught without his spears. You can see the Samburu's warrior's seven-foot throwing spear as the most advanced state-of-the-art spear of its type on the planet. With this extraordinary spear, warriors routinely dispatch marauding leopards, lions, and even firearm-toting bandits at unheard of distances. Uh, pretty pretty impressive sounding there. Let's go up a little bit, starting to see the spear now. Uh, our Samburu spear breaks down into three components. The first is the spearhead itself permanently welded to a 3 8 uh, thick steel shaft. Second is the counterbalancing butt spike, also known as the shoe. This is used as an alternative point for practice throwing uh, preserving the actual spear blade itself for more serious work. Um, third is the back, the black hardwood handle 
a double taper connecting the head and shoe. This spear could be described as a 300 Winchester Magnum of the spear world. It can be used at any long range, flies straight, has flat trajectory, hits hard, penetrates deep, like the 300 Winchester Mag. It can be used to take any animal in North America. Wow, that's a pretty, uh, pretty confident um, statement there. Um, let's go see. There we go. The uh, head, shoe, and handle. Um, I didn't know much about the terminology of spears, but I'm glad I, I can learn them now. Uh, there's a little note here. We made our Samburu spear as tough as possible. However, if you bend your spear shaft or shoe butt spike, it can easily be straightened with a vise or a hammer, and the tough hickory handle of your spear eventually breaks, so please be prepared to replace it. Good to know. Uh, assembly. To assemble your Samburu spear, um, one, take the head and shoe and fit them tightly into the handle. Never use an awl or scribe to mark the handle. Oh, no, not never. Next, use an awl or scribe to mark the handle in the pre-drilled holes of the head and shoe. After you have done this, remove the head and shoe and drill the holes using a 130, 30 second approximate drill bit. Uh, three, once the holes are drilled, you can put the head and any shoe back in place. Once they are tightly put back into place, uh, put in the screws, make sure the three heads are generously coated with some wood glue, and then turn them in snugly, and your Samburu spear is ready to go. Well, here's some more breakdown of it, of the process. Marking, drilling, uh, gluing, and down here we have a warranty. We stand behind our products 100%. We subject them to the highest standards in the industry and strive to make each as perfect as possible. We warrant this product is free of defects in workmanship and materials. This warranty does not cover uh, wear and tear damage caused by misuse, lack of normal maintenance, or disassembly. Remember, anything can break or fail if subject to sufficient abuse. So please do not use this, pro this product inappropriately. Please use cautions when handling cold steel products. <laughs> Watch our videos, follow our photos, and like and comment, post, become part of the social media network, Cold Steel Knives, ColdSteel.com, and the various... Uh, social media outlets there so all right um that's the box pretty much pretty nice i'm i'm pretty impressed with this um compared to a lot of the swords i got which were um just you know uh sometimes come just in a plastic wrap with a little cardboard uh label which they which they hang off of all right um, so this is pretty nice. Uh, my halberd didn't come in something like this. I don't know if they come like that originally, uh, the halberd I'm talking about. Um, I think I got mine, I may have gotten mine secondhand. Anyways, it's pretty awesome, but let's get this one open so we can see. Uh, back to my discussion on uh, pole arms. Um, so I got my first halberd uh, after the one that I tried making. Um, the cold steel halberd, and uh, I took it out. I haven't really done any cut tests on it. Uh, honestly, um, I was worried about testing it in its current state because um, it comes with a nice hardwood handle, and I don't really want to mess it up. So I ended up fastening it, fastening it briefly to a uh, iron pipe. Um, I. Like I was mentioning with the, the pole arm I tried making myself, I gotta show that to you guys sometime. Um, this box is giving me some trouble getting open. Um, with an iron pipe as a shaft, I found it's just a little bit heavy. That's something you may see a lot in you know novelty or costume uh, style of weaponry. Um, I think just metal shafts. I don't think it's. I don't know if it's historically accurate. I doubt. You're going to see too many historical pole arms with steel or iron shafts. Um, they're just a bit heavy, so wood definitely tends to be a little bit better. Unfortunately, yes, that means the chances of them breaking are a lot greater. But typically, I think, you know, you'd have a lot of spears, you know, ready to go. Um, so since, since that, I recently reassembled it with the wood. And that's uh, that's kind of leads me to what I like about this one. Um, there goes the hickory uh, wood handle that is the, yeah, just known as the handle. And in here in the bag I have the head and the shoe. 
Let's go ahead and get them out. Nice, uh, you know, wrap job there. You can kind of see everything in there. See what you get. Uh, this is how I'm used to cold steel. Uh, at least my machete swords all came in, you know, similar to this. Same thing with the, a few of the knives I got from them. Just a little, you know, cold steel label up here. So this is what I'm more used to. Now let's see if we can get this one, this out. zip tied together here's my screws here looks like uh, some Sam Samburu spear instructions same instructions are read off on the box and that's it and uh, let's go ahead and get this freed from the zip ties I'm going to try to be very careful to not scrape the metal But uh, just a disclaimer for you out there, anybody from Cold Steel, if you're watching, I am probably going to be putting through this, this through some serious torture testing. Um, there's the nice uh, sheath there, hard, hard sheath, more like a little scabbard, secure X sheath there. Do not grip here, do not grip here. Cool, I like... Uh, Use extreme caution, grip here, use extreme caution, that's where you're supposed to pull it off. Uh, we're not going to take it out yet. But there you go, all the way down. This is the head, you can see the pre-drilled holes, ready for you to put in your screws. I could definitely see why using this with some wood glue would definitely be helpful. This is the shoe, known as the shoe, it comes in wrapped in a little... Uh, plastic there that's the bottom spike of the shoe let's see if I could get that off I might need some tools to get that off anyhow um I heard that this spear was supposed to be pretty sharp um, and it definitely looks it I mean look at that that's that's just a beautiful blade there love the design of that head um, I don't think the, the weld job looks too fancy um, Got a few friends that are welders that definitely would complain about that. But um, for function, you know, I'm, I'm pretty confident. I've seen some good uh, review videos on it already. This thing looks like it has a pretty decent point there. So I think this thing should do some pretty, pretty serious uh, skewering, so to speak. Um, yeah, originally I wanted to try to use this as a training weapon, but very quickly realized that... Um, this is just going to be a little too, too uh, functional, so to speak. You know, a little too good at its job. Um, you know, this is this is a this is a hunting tool. I would definitely say. Um, anyhow, back to my discussion on pole arms. With this review, you see this will go in here, nice and easy. And then the uh, let me see if I can move that around. This thing is seven feet tall, keep this in mind, so not the most room. That's basically what it's going to look like when it's assembled. Look how long this thing is. This is really impressive. Um, back to my discussion on pole arms. Let me take that apart again. Lay it down. Um, my favorite from what I've seen of, uh, of different pole arms is going to have to be the, so far... I haven't tested this one yet, so, you know, things may change. But so far, it would have to be the Roman Pelum. Um, as far as the weapon's concerned, it, it seemed very strong. The head is very, very strong. Uh, looked like it'd be a great penetrating weapon through shields. Um, not to mention, you could use it as a spear uh, and a lance. You can throw it. Um, the cool thing I like about that is they were designed to... Uh, they had a similar design to this. Where the head is on a very nice long rod. So um, typically when an opponent would try guarding, this would hit the shield. And without having this thicker base, um, this, the spear would be able to penetrate a little bit deeper because it's not going to get slowed down by the shaft 
as it enters into the you know the opponent's spear so typically especially at a length like this which uh seems like pelum's had a similar length to this but a length like this where the base is all the way up here it's nice and thin the whole shaft and then you have the head um at this length even someone guarding with a shield is probably still going to get hit by the head um and that seems similar to the to the, the pelum i wish i had an example of a pelum um anyhow my point is um that this is very similar to that design i think just like i mentioned with the rod the other thing about the pelums is that um they were kind of designed to, to break apart upon impact um which you would think wouldn't be a good thing however it would prevent your enemy from simply picking up your spear and throwing it back at you um you know and then they would come back and you know pick them up and they could be reassembled and that's just awesome um i think this follows a very similar design. This, this is going to be the weakest part right here of the entire uh, spear after construction. And it's just a wooden shaft. Um, those can definitely be replaced, remade. Um, you know, I, I would be curious to see how this spear would handle with maybe a polymer, um, you know, a polymer or nylon uh, handle instead of wood. Um might make it a little more durable. Anyhow, if you were using, you know, battle tactics, using this as a battle weapon, I mean, it might be a good advantage to have it where it would break on impact. Um, you know, just so that it couldn't be thrown against you or used against you. I like this thing because if it, even if it did break on impact, depending what side, you still have this entire shaft here on both of them. Um, even if I didn't include any broken pieces of wood that might be left in it, this is still a very form formidable weapon. Even the shoe, which is essentially just a spike. Um, I got I got to get the spike out of there. I don't know if you can see that in there. Let me see. Really see that little spike in there. Let's see if I can get that out. All right, I got it. There you go. You know, if it broke, you'd still have this spike. Another formidable weapon. Um, you know, let's say maybe you didn't have a, a shield. You could just use these two. Just hold them just like I'm holding them right now. And, you know, attack at one, parry with the other, or, or switch off. Attack and parry uh, alternating, uh, you know, sporadically. Throw them off, you know. Um, anyhow, let me uh, get that back on there. Keep this thing nice and safe. This is definitely not a toy. Um, always handle these weapons with caution and care. Keep them nice and safe. I'm going to get this thing all the back up before I put it back away. Um, I'll be uploading a video soon with this thing put together, uh, doing a few test throws. Um, that's the other subject I wanted to mention. Uh, they, you know, they, they mention on the back of here that the tribe that used this, uh, the Samburu tribe in Kenya, this thing, you know, was uh, the 300 Winchester Magnum. You know, it could take any animal in North America. Um, you know, it's, it's considered the most advanced state-of-the-art spear on the planet, uh, at least by cold steel. Let me know what you guys think of that. Um, I think some of its form and function is similar to uh, the Roman pilum. Let me know if you think I'm crazy for comparing the two. Um, anyhow, I'm going to get it put together uh, and test it out. Um, I, I really like this. I think it could be used... Uh, even a little bit as a, you know, like a battle spear, not necessarily just throwing. I've seen videos where they take this piece and they're cutting up boxes and leaves and it's supposed to be very impressive. Um, I don't have much experience with spears. The only other uh, spear that I have that I really call just, just a battle spear primarily, not, a, not that I can't throw it, is my uh, Colombian survival spear. This is one that I... Did a video on just the head a while back. Go ahead and check that out. I've since then attached a shaft. I'm going to do a full review on this one. Let me know what you think of that if you want to see that one. Um, I'm pretty confident I can throw the Colombian as well. But I just don't think it's going to be the greatest for throwing. I feel like I'll get much more of a distance as well as penetration out of that bad boy. Just due to how light it is. Um, you know, how long it is. Uh, just the design. It's so thin that I feel like it's going to get some good flex as it's traveling through the air, which should generate more force on impact. Um, I'm going to 
to show you now the first steer that I got, which was the uh, MTEC. This is the MTEC uh, tactical spear uh, from the United Cutlery. Um, take off that just to show you the tip. It's got a little rust on it. I need to do a good review on this one also. Um, but this is only uh, about four feet long. A uh, nice polymer handle, like I was mentioning. I'd love to see this with a polymer handle. Um, but this thing is, is a rugged workhorse also. Um, this makes a good training spear, good good beginning throwing spear. And you could also use it as a battle spear. This thing, I, I've hit some things with it. It's pretty tough. Got to do a video, video on this one. But all in all, I'm pretty confident that the title, uh, the real champions of the pole arms for what I have so far, is probably definitely going to go to the Cold Steel Samburu Spear for my top uh, thrower uh, and the Cold Steel uh, Halberd. I'm not going to bring that one down now to show you, but I'll do another review on the Halberd. So, all right, guys, let me know what you think of this uh, new spear. Um, can't wait to get it put together. Let me know what you think of any of the other uh, pole arms that I mentioned in the video, all right? Thanks for joining.